My name is Kelly Lynch. I live in San Francisco. My rareness doesn't really start with pH. pH is probably the lesser of the rare things for me because I'm supposed to be a conjoined twin and the other baby just didn't develop. So I ended up with like, some might call it a parasitic twin situation where it was just like kind of parts and bits and pieces. And essentially the main thing that I ended up with was a kind of an extra spine. So it's like double helix there. And it kind of created this hump, which is like now hunting me over, which is over time has contributed to the pH. So I've actually probably had pH my whole life, but not to the degree where it was very severe or known. When I was younger, they actually did quite a few surgeries on me. They did a series of three in one year to sort of keep me more upright because they had an idea that it was going to affect my breathing severely. So they wanted to sort of keep my spine and everything as upright as possible. So they put a halo on my head and attached weights to it. And then they took ribs and tried to make kind of a buttress, try to brace it up like an internal brace, but that didn't work. Eventually the bones just kind of dissolved, but a bone in my back fused together and it made the whole thing just miraculously work out for quite a while. I did have several surgeries. They did remove a third arm that I had growing kind of at the back of my neck. Um, that wasn't really useful or for anything. It was just kind of there. There's only one photo of that. My mom offered to throw it away. She didn't know if I'd want to see it. And I was like, yeah, yeah I want to see it. I honestly wish I could have kept the arm. I'm a bit into my freaky self now. Um, <laughs> as I got older, I started like fascinating my own self. I would visit my family in Ireland every once in a while. And the last time I had gone back, I was walking around with friends and I couldn't get more than like, you know, six steps without running out of breath. And I was like, this is bizarre. You know, this is even worse than I normally am. Like my heart would just start racing. And eventually I just started using a wheelchair and my, my friends were actually quite worried about me at that time. I had to have like people's hands to hold their hands when I was walking to get my arms off my chest. That gave me a little bit of leverage. I didn't know what was going on, honestly. And the racing of my heart really freaked me out. I have a friend who's a cardiologist in Philadelphia. I wrote him first and I said, I don't think I'm having a heart attack because it wouldn't, you know, keep going for days like that. But I said, this is kind of bizarre. And he was like, yeah, I would definitely go in to check on that. And he was like basically explaining that sometimes clinic doesn't know how sick you actually are. So just go to the urgent care or something. And I was like, okay. I think I ended up going into the pulmonary hypertension cardiologist at UCSF at one point. They had a department just for that. That's when I got diagnosed. It took me a while to get around to this because when you hear that it's life shortening, as far as I knew, nothing that I had was terminal in terms of my body shape and my conjoined twin, my scoliosis and all that. So when you hear that you do have a terminal disease, not knowing what the actual truth is in terms of life expectancy, because you're reading things on Google and you're talking to your doctors and you get 50 million answers. It's very, very depressing at first, or it was for me anyway. And I'm not going to lie. I'm very happy now, but I was in a dark spot for a while because... One, I had this image that everybody around me would kind of be there and they surround your bedside, you know, like in the movie and they're all there for you doing anything you want because you're about to die, you know? And I felt like a lot of people just kind of were like going about their lives and I was stuck home because I couldn't get around as well. People don't like to call these days. Like it's all about texting and I hated texting. So I was just kind of like, I'm asking you for the courtesy of a FaceTime or a call and you can't even give me that and you don't know when I'm going to die. I definitely inflated it way more in my head at the time. And I actually had to seek counseling because I just didn't know what to do with it all. And they basically said that it gets harder for people who love you more. So the people you thought would be closer to you might retreat. And I had to explain to them, like, you know, I had to explain to people in general. It's like when someone is ill, it's not about you. It's about them. You need to be there whether it's hard for you or not, because that person feels extremely alone. And that's part of what I started my TikTok account about, because I wanted that message to get out there. And it's not about saying the wrong thing to the person. People give lots of dumb advice to people when they don't know what their body is like, oh, you should eat celery. <laughs> you know, I said, it's not about that. It's just like, sure, saying the wrong thing is still much better than not being there at all. And but moreover, to say the right thing, you can just be like, what can I do to help you? How can I be there? Do you just want to watch a movie? Like, Talk about regular things. 
And at one point I joined a Facebook group. It was a different one than I'm in now, but I actually did have to leave the Facebook group for a period of time because there seemed to be a string of people that were passing away at that time around November of that year. And I was like, this is depressing. I can't be in here. It's making it worse. So I got out of that for a while till I came to terms with everything. I didn't want to wear my oxygen at first because I'm young. I'm 37. I was very vain. And I was like, nope, I want to look cool. I don't need to look more disabled than I already am. I was very ableist against myself in general, even before the PH. Like, I would never get the disabled parking um, placard because I didn't want the little wheelchair man anywhere near me, like in the car or like the desk at school. Like, if it had the little sticker on it, I was like, nope, I'm not sitting there. You know, I did everything I could to just completely deny being disabled in any way, shape, or form. After a while, I realized that's not really a good thing to do. It's a disservice to other people as well. And it's a disservice to yourself because you push your body in ways that you shouldn't necessarily when you could just go with the flow and be happier and lighter and spend less time worrying about things and just enjoy the stuff that brings you joy. So it was kind of like a release. I definitely don't like taking my meds still because they make me feel bad, but I try to do them, especially now with COVID. I'm trying my darndest to not end up back in the hospital. (laughs) It was like September of the year before that my niece showed me TikTok. She showed me a funny sound, a funny video, and it was like a little funny, whistly, squeaky sound. And I said, oh, that's hilarious. I want to make one. So she's like, yeah, you should do it. Another friend of mine was, she's a little bit younger than me too. She was like, oh yeah, everybody would think your videos are hilarious. So I just put a few videos. I would say for the better part of the year, you know, maybe I had a few hundred people that followed me. It's the at sign and then it's too low front row. It's like T-O-O low front row. And that is because I'm very short and I love going to concerts. And if I'm not in the front row, I see nothing but butts. (laughs) I had posted a few things that were funny. One kind of went mini viral at one point because usually what happens is something will just pop off and then that's where you get all your followers and your likes and all your stuff. And At one point, I did a general disability joke kind of thing, basically kind of teasing at the whole, oh, you're so inspirational, you know, and I'm just living my life like getting a soda kind of thing, you know. And so I made that and that one kind of went viral and then um, nothing for a while, just kind of here and there. And then at one point, I just decided to talk about my disability and I showed myself, I said, this is what I've got going on. And it just went bananas. I ended up getting like hundreds of thousands of views on it. I got the majority of followers from that and one subsequent other video. And from then on, it just kind of kept going. And then I got quite a few new people from the last video. Actually, that was how I was discovered as well by the Born Different people. There are so many bits of advice I could give. Uh, One thing that helped me initially was we get over the vanity of the oxygen. I don't know if people probably heard of uh, Chloe Timchin. When I first got diagnosed, you know, I was trying to find like cute oxygen tanks or cute cannulas or something. And she said, give your oxygen tank a name. And I guess hers was uh, Steve Martin. And so I was like, okay. And then I had my friends name my little mini one. And that's how we came up with Roxygen. So she got a little personality and that made her less of a medical device. And I guess another thing is just speak up. Don't take no for an answer. Like if you're not satisfied with your treatment, if you're not satisfied with your team, if your friends aren't really getting it just keep talking to them you know just keep looking keep looking for new people if you need to invite more people into your circle don't let yourself be pushed aside because that that was what happened for me and i there's no reason for that i finally came around to being joyous because you could deal with all the physical ramifications of ph and be sick and bloated and you know, tired and what have you, and also be sad and miserable about it. Or you could distract yourself and be happy about the things that bring you joy. So at least you're not sad on top of being sick, you know? And I think that's where I finally made the turning point. My name is Kelly Lynch, and I'm aware that I'm rare.